Rising in the Swiss Alps and winding its way down into the Mediterranean is a quintessentially French waterway that flows through the gastronomic heart of France. That's right, this week on Planet Cruise Weekly, we are exploring the River Rhone. Well, hello and welcome to episode 76 of Planet Cruise Weekly. I'm Keith, ex-cruise director and general waffler about the cruise industry. And this is Glenn, a gentleman who claims to have worked on board, but what it actually means is he was in charge of the destination services, which means he basically spent his time having his eyebrows waxed. Checking out helicopter rides. Checking out helicopter Making rides. Making sure the catamaran's all right. Getting, and playing a, dolphins. getting a suntan, you know, doing very little. Yeah, so what am I doing back here then? I don't know, <laughs> no idea. <laughs> you pull the short straw. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> okay, this week we're gonna take a look at an area that is pretty much guaranteed to make you pile on more than a couple of pounds because the Rhone Valley uh, and that particular region of France are some of the best wine and cheese in the world. And if you're like me and Glenn, you like your wine and your cheese. Now the 500 mile long Rhone Swan River, which winds its way through the country before flowing into the Mediterranean near Marseille provides one of the world's most memorable cruising experiences. Now named originally by the Celts who called it Rodo, that which rolls, this mighty river starts its course near the Rhone Glacier in Switzerland and eventually flows west through Lake Geneva before entering France at Lyon where the Rhone and Saone River kiss. But the river divides again at Arles, becoming the Grand Rhone and the Petite Rhone, both of which course down to the Mediterranean via Camarge, a spectacular river delta famed for its distinctive horses and bulls. A cruise along the stretch of navigable waters will carry you past verdant vineyards, lush olive and orange groves, and fields of fragrant purple lavender. In fact, the Rhone Valley south of Lyon captures the very essence of the south of France with terracotta roofed houses and a wonderful Mediterranean climate that's hotter and drier than the adjacent parts of the country. And the river delta begins at Arles and extends through the plain and the salt marshes of the Camarge to the sea. Now we're gonna have a look at when to go to this beautiful part of the region of France and who goes there. So the Rhone cruising season is actually really long. It tends to stretch from March all the way through to December and takes a bit of a break in January and February. Now, if you're looking for glorious sun, though we'd recommend heading out between June and late September as you would do here in the UK. The Rhone is such a popular area that pretty much all the river cruise lines populate it at some point, but the main players are Viking and Avalon. Now, if you'd like more information on exactly which brands cruise here, then click the link up here. Thank you, Glamorous Assistant, to go through to the website now. So let's have a look at the popular itineraries and also some of the great stops that you might experience if you do cruise down the Rhone. Uh, first of all, most of the Rhone River cruises in France are typically between Lyon and Avignon or Arles. But many packages also include the Saone River, which joins the Rhone in Lyon. Now a cruise that combines both rivers usually begins or ends on the Saone River, just about 80 miles north of Lyon in the city of chalon sur saone now, there are also itineraries that combine other waterways, though they're not directly connected to the Rhone River. So for instance, a few companies offer a cruise on the Rhone and Seine rivers, but also a separate cruise on the Seine. So let's have a look at some of the highlights now, the potential stops as you cruise down the Rhone River. Now we're gonna start our journey down the Rhone from the city of Lyon. They have a very good football team, by the way. And although we're starting our guide here, as we've just mentioned, some river cruises do start slightly further north. But this is on the Saone, but we'll leave those destinations for another time. The capital of the Rhone Alps region, Lyon, is the second largest metropolitan area in France. But this historic city actually beats Paris as a cruising destination thanks to its prime location at the confluence of the Rhone and the Saone rivers. And the original medieval town of Vieux Lyon was founded in 43 BC by Lieutenant Julius Caesar on a hilltop district which you can still visit called uh, Fourvière. Ruins of this Roman settlement are recognised as a UNESCO World Heritage Site which is fantastic and there's concerts and operas still held in this ancient and amphitheatre every summer which is only partially intact, but really beautifully atmospheric. Due to its twin riverside location, Lyon had a thriving Docklands that over the years fell into disrepair due to the underuse, but Lyon has recently embarked on a three billion euro regeneration project that will see the heart of the city double in size. 
Now, if you tee this up with the recent development of the direct rail link to Lyon from London, the city is becoming even more popular as a city break location. Now, while we're on the subject of dockyard regeneration, one of the first places you should consider visiting is a place called the Musée de Confluence. Uh, this building is a major part of the regeneration and it's stunning to look at, let alone go inside. Inside the museum, it tells the story of humanity through a collection of two million, yes, you did hear me correctly, two million objects, including a thousand-year-old mummy, one of Glenn's ex-girlfriends, and a piece of old moon rock. Now, the other museum in the area that's really worth a look is the Musée uh, de Beaux Arts, which is known as the Mini Louvre. Again, my French pronunciation Honestly, probably needs like, a bit. It's like being in Paris. <laughs> it right? is, isn't it? Oh, uh, mais oui. Uh, and this house is a fine collection of some of the great masters, including Monet, uh, Manet, uh, Pissado, Degas, uh, Picasso, and many, many more. And the best thing is it comes without the queues that you'd normally find at the Louvre in Paris. If you're looking to go for a nice walk, then you should definitely head to the Trebleuse. Now here you'll find a twisted network of covered alleyways and stairways that linked courtyards and homes with the river from medieval times. Some of these alleyways are still open and identified by discrete signs, and for war buffs, you'll find out the interesting facts to know what the escape routes were and the hiding places during the war itself. Now while you're out for a walk, you can also take in some seriously impressive street art painted by the Site Creation Cooperative. The large murals were painted to tell the street and story of Lyon's neighbourhoods and its most famous citizens. And of course, if you get peckish, there is an incredible 4,000 different restaurants to choose from and 15 Michelin stars. But the one place you need to try is the Covered Market. Now, the local produce on display there is absolutely fantastic and it's liveliest on a Sunday morning. There are many great places to eat and of course, we can't go into each one, but if you do get a chance to go out and eat in Lyon, do take it because you won't be disappointed. Next up on our trip down the Rhone, we have Vienne, not Vienna, but Vienne, which is a historian's dream. Pretty much every street you head down takes you onto another ancient church or Roman ruin or picture postcard view. The great thing here is that you can buy a ticket that will gain you entrance to all the local monuments and museums during a 48 hour period for only six euros bargain. Now amongst those sites is Site Galo Romain. This is where you can find several excavated villas, houses, workshops and public baths and roads that were all built by the Romans. The Roman Gateway, which is the last remaining vestige of the city's Roman baths and the Theatre Romain are also there. And this, to put in perspective, is the largest Roman theatre in Gaul. It measures 143 yards across and it was able to hold a massive 13,000 spectators. Now, rubble buried the theatre in 1922, but a more recent excavation has revealed 46 rows of seats, some marble flooring, and some beautiful, beautiful work all the way down across the stage. Next stop is Viviers, and from the river you'll get an almost dreamlike vision of beauty with the pale stone buildings and cathedral on the hill, being flanked on the other side of the river by fields of stunning flowers. Here you can find hints of the Romans everywhere, but also some glimpses of the medieval times as well. A few of the must-see sites include the Belvedere of Rocha de Chateauvoux. Easy to say. <laughs> which can be found in the old religious quarter. Now from this 14th century fortification, you get an incredible 360 degree panoramic view over the port, the rooftops, and also the river. And while you're in that religious quarter high above the town, definitely do pop into the cathedral as well, uh, because it's quite stunning. The Cathedral saint Vincent is a beautiful mix of medieval Romanesque and Gothic architecture, which was originally built in 1119. It's had its fair share of destru destruction and repair over the years, but definitely worth a look for the exquisite marble inlay in the reconstructions that was placed there by the Italian masons as they strive to rebuild the cathedral. Now, as we continue our journey down the Rhone, our next port of call is Tournon. Uh, and the first site that we'll capture right here is the Passerelle Marc Seguin. It's built in 1849 by engineer Marc Seguin and it's noted as being the first suspension bridge with iron cables and is actually listed as a historic monument. The village itself is a very pretty place full of historical buildings but definitely do check out the museum uh, which is just within the castle, well worth a look. Tanon's historical centre is a stunning maze of narrow streets scattered with different monuments that draw on the cultural heritage. However, one of the best sites here is the Jardin d'Eden, which simply translated is the Garden of Eden. No, not that one. But the garden is the former park of the Cordos uh, Monastery and the Notre Dame Convent, and is an island of green and cornice. 
If you look hard enough as you walk around, you'll find the old houses and bridges that there are steps leading up to the panoramic viewpoints all the way down onto the river, which is absolutely stunning. Next up, if you get a chance, then do head over to see the Ardèche Gorges. In 1980, they were classified as a national nature reserve in order to preserve the Mediterranean flora and fauna of the area. But if you're a thrill seeker, you might already be familiar with the area because it's a 20 mile descent into what's called the Sinuous Gorge. Uh, and it's a must for all kayakers and canoers. And the descent includes 25 rapids and it's been drawing crowds since 1932. Hikers can also do the same route on foot in around about 12 hours. Oh, lovely, sign me up. Arles is our next stop, and although famous for being the town that Van Gogh spent a lonely and miserable period of his life, fortunately is now a more laid back and happy place. It has a wonderful small town feel and everywhere you look, you'll see golden stone buildings. Originally a Celtic settlement, Arles later became the Roman city of Gaul and the houses an extraordinary Roman amphitheater that is definitely worth a look. Now ancient ruins are scattered everywhere you go in Arles and it's the old Roman center that still forms the main hub of the day-to-day -day life. The city is very much alive and kicking these days, various music festivals, crafts, and uh, regional produce markets, and even a photography festival. Plus, there are lots of little Provence cafes all around should you need a break, or maybe you just want to sit and people watch. We mentioned Van Gogh earlier, and if you'd like to visit the place where he recuperated after that unfortunate incident with his ear, well, you're in luck. You can visit the uh, Espace de Van Gogh which was the hospital the artist recovered in. The courtyard has been lovingly restored and landscaped to match one of the artist's paintings. If you're a Van Gogh lover, then you can even go and stand on the site of the now famous Masson June, the Yellow House, which was sadly destroyed by bombs in 1944. In fact, there are eight sites around Arles linked to Van Gogh. Now our last stop on this very quick overview of the Rhone is Avignon and in the 14th century of course Avignon was actually the capital of Christendom after Pope Clement V moved the court here to avoid the chaos that was occurring in Rome at the time. And you can still see remnants of this in the UNESCO protected architecture of the area such as the Palais de the Popes and also of course the Chateau Neuf de Pat, which I'm mm. sure you're aware does still produce the odd bottle of decent red. We do like a nice bottle of Chateau Neuf de Pat. The city itself is surrounded by ramparts and is completely pedestrianised, giving it that small town feel. Every year Avignon hosts a huge contemporary performing arts festival called the Festival de Avignon and thousands of visitors flock to the site. The Palais de Paps is at the heart of the city and is a stunning building showing off the wealth of the church at the time. Now, if arts are your thing, then you do need to head along to the Collection Lambert. Uh, this is a contemporary art space built in an 18th century townhouse and courtyard, and it's recently been refurbished, doubling its size. Uh, and recent exhibitions include uh, the Un Museum Imaginaire, which is a collection of uh, artwork dedicated to opera, film and theatre. Plus, there's even artworks to see as you walk around with the trompe l'oeil fresco scattered throughout the city. Of course, there are countless incredible places to eat and drink as well. But if you fancy picking up a few cookery skills while you're here, you can do that as well. The Hotel de la Miranda offers a cookery school for both adults and children. Here you'll be taught how to cook some provincial delights by Michelin-starred chefs from across the region followed by an incredible three-course gourmet dinner. Our last suggestion for why you're in the Avignon area has to be pont de garde And although this is a little way from the city, it's still definitely worth checking out. The pont de garde is an ancient Roman aqueduct that enjoys again UNESCO protection, one of the grand sites of France, and it crosses the Gardon River. It's a real feat of engineering to behold, and there's an incredible museum on site which gives you the full history of the aqueduct as well as an interactive area for the kids, so you can pop along. Is there soft, soft play? I don't know off the top of my head, mate. <laughs> is there a ball pool? Is this for you or, the, or your child? Oh, God, Brooke's not going, it's just for me. <laughs> so if you are planning to choose to cruise on the road, then Glenn and I have put together a few tips for you. The first one is definitely to pack a comfortable pair of shoes. You'll need them for walking ashore. Uh, you get a lot of cobbles in you know, a lot of kind of uh, the ruins, of course, as well. Uh, they're quite difficult for you to walk around. And if your mobility is limited, be aware that many river stops do involve climbing at least a few steps. So you've got to be a little bit mobile on there. Now take a windbreaker or shawl. The chilly mistral winds can flow through the province even in the unusually balmy spring and autumn months. So carry an extra layer just in case. A small umbrella often makes sense as well. Or one of them little portable rain maps you can just stick yeah. in and pull out of the 
Now definitely do remember to leave room for souvenirs. This part of the world is a foodie paradise, so do leave spots in your suitcase for those must-have jars of things like Dijon mustard and bottles of fine French wine and cognac, your Chateau Neuf de Pat that Glenn's so fond of. And you'll also find gorgeous lavender scented olive oil based soaps in Provence. Take earplugs. Uh, pack a pair to avoid being woken up by rumblings as your boat makes an early morning departure from its moorings. And be prepared for calls to clear the top deck as your boat goes under the low bridges or otherwise limbo. Well, we do hope that uh, that's given you a bit more of an idea about the Rhone River. Again, very quintessentially French, loads to see and do, and loads of food to enjoy, wouldn't you say, Glenn? Uh, and the wines. And the wines as well, lots to taste as well. So a great part of the world. Um, get in touch, let us know what you want us to cover next. Remember, all of this is based around, your feedback is based around the kind of cruising areas and the information that you want us to look into and then to feed back to you. Uh, we do want to say a big thank you actually to a couple of people that got in touch. Um, and a big thank you first of all to Travelling the World. Uh, she said, always loving anything like this. And of course that was commenting on our recent adults versus uh, kids Disney blog post on Facebook. So thank you very much Travelling the World for getting in touch. Tell us where you have travelled. Tell us more about yourself. And then we had another lovely comment from Cameron Powell on the Tui Discovery Planet Cruise Weekly episode that we did. Right, it was okay. proved very popular. Uh, and Cameron said, Coralar was the best food he'd ever had. Oh my word. So uh, other people want to get in touch with Glenn. How do they do it? Do it a number of different ways. They can contact us at hello at planetcruise.co.uk. You can check us out on Facebook, Twitter. Make sure you go onto our YouTube channel here, watching the show, subscribe. It's free to do so. And you can watch the other 74 episodes and you've got nothing better to do one evening. Then also go onto our website, planetcruise.co.uk. That will bring up all the cruises. You can filter the ones for you. Well, thanks very much for watching and uh, we'll see you soon. Cheers, guys.